Good afternoon. I am Kang Yi Jin from Curso. It is my great pleasure to be here. I'd like to thank President Todoki of KMOU and the organizers for inviting me to this important event. Today, I want to talk about technology trends for electric hybrid propulsion vessels. Many people in the field may say electric hybrid propulsion vessels are a few a distant future, but I'd like to make some suggestions, including electrification and electric hybrid propulsion. I think you might be bored with looking at these pictures because you've seen these pictures quite open by next year. EEXI will, in effect, the two mid carbon emission regulations, the shipyard industry and the shipping industries should do work harder. When we plan uh, electric vessel, hybrid electric propulsion systems or other research, we collect a lot of data or information from different stakeholders. And different stakeholders have different voices. And they often ask whether we can have a vessel fueled by ammonia and by when should we build infrastructure for transportation by ammonia and hydrogen. And electro electric propulsion for vessels. Yes, we agree that it is needed, but what technologies will be needed? And by when we should we develop the technologies? That, they are the questions most asked. So we are almost, we are approaching the end of 2022. And at this point, many companies in many countries are seeing some alternative fuels. They expected some alternative fuels and some new technologies will dominate the market, but that's not the case. So many governments are leading research on ammonia development. But if you think about shipyards, the shipyards may say the ammonia fuel tanks will be additionally required, and is it feasible? And is there any other problems that ammonia is produced in one place and you can get supplied ammonia in other places? And there are some, I heard there are some problems with the combustion of ammonia. Methane generates a high carbon emission, and ammonia also produces some emissions. That's the problem we need to deal with. And ammonia is also toxic. A new toxic chemical releases by combust ammonia. So we have this, this, this series of problems. As the previous keynote speaker said, we need some space for batteries or electrification on board. 60% of cargo load will be lost if you use batteries for propulsion um, starting from next year. A ship companies need to come up with some plans to meet EXI. And Europe has been using batteries like 10 years earlier than us, and it has introduced new standardizations and regulations. But last year, there was a tragic fire, and the combustion wasn't completed. Yes, batteries are used for submarines, but as an engineer, I open, I tend to look for the most feasible engineering solutions. But even if uh, submarines require a small amount of batteries, small number of batteries, they should be safe. Without cost reduction, batteries will not be able to replace ICEs at all or they won't be able to be used along with ICEs. What if there is a fire? How can you ensure safety when you use batteries for vessels? So we need to think about it. So with that in mind, what technologies by when should we develop? And that's a very important issue, and that, is, that is, has an important implication for 
electric propulsion for six ships. And there was a question how long it will cost to produce and construct green ships. And if you convert the dollar, it will cost about 12 trillion won. And to test and to ensure safety, it costs a lot more to have effective track record. So we have this ambitious goal, carbon neutrality. Before we talk about before we talk about carbon neutrality we have to think about this formula otherwise we won't be able to meet the EEXI or EEDI regulations I am working at CRISO and CRISO is the only Korea's only government funded organization working on this sector and the shipbuilding many maritime industries uh, its mark their market size is 47 billion won it's right after the semiconductor industry but i believe the shipbuilding and maritime industries deserve more attention my organization has a focus on effectiveness of operation that is why we've developed energy saving devices for vessels and shipping companies have been developed slow steaming uh, technologies so that they are able to meet EXI or EDI requirements. But we, we need to come up with more advanced technologies if we want to introduce electric propulsion vessels. And the main propulsion system can be changed to battery or fuel cell. That will be possible. We could combine hydrogen, ammonia, or we can use fuel cell, but that's not easy to do. We could apply the fuel cell for power generation for vessels, but SFC, which is a solid fuel, if this is applied to vessel, the cost will increase to 3 billion to 5 billion Korean won. And many safety technologies are being developed. And if we use the, the fuel that is used in land to transport to uh, the vessels, then we have to address the stability and safety issues. And if we use solid fuel into to for the large vessels then we have to increase the temperature gradually and when the vessel uh, actually conducts birthing then we will have to use ICE so if you try to apply a new technology we, you face new problems and supply chain or cost problems are accompanying uh, the, the 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 possible adoption of new technology. In that way, we cannot take dominant position in the market. As you see in the picture, there are many types of energy efficiency improvement technologies, such as slow steaming and renewable energy or wind power, solar power related technologies could be used, but we will have to do our best to meet the regulations, regulatory requirements. In terms of uh, electric propulsion system, we could consider hybrid system. So naval vessels might adopt such system earlier than private uh, ordinary vessels. And this propulsion system is gradually being uh, commercialized. The, the big problem here is that we are thinking about whether we should use hydrogen, ammonia, or a methanol like uh, Musk, Musk, but Korean shipbuilding industries or marine uh, shipping industries are not yet fully prepared because they don't have the foundation to use such uh, fuels and engines. Uh, 
Thanks to the efforts made by the Korea Maritime and Oceans University, um, certain megawatt level uh, facilities have been constructed, but most of the equipment that are included in such facilities are actually being supplied and provided by foreign companies like uh, Kongsberg. Then, for local development and local production, what technologies or systems do we need to develop further? And we need to secure track records, including the demonstration records. And could individual companies bear all the costs? No, we don't think so. So we need to consider these aspects when we think about electrification of propulsion system. And if electrification cannot be done, easily, then we could use a uh, battery. For example, in the case of uh, vehicles, if you, you may reduce the engine scale to, for example, from, from 2,000 to 1,500 cc, and you can use battery to supply the power. And the leftover electricity could be used to recharge the battery. And in that case, you have to think about the C rate of the battery. When you establish a hybrid system, how much battery capacity could be um, accepted? Because depending on that uh, C rate level, there's a risk of uh, fire and explosion. So we're paying attention to green ship technologies, not only Korea, but also other developed countries are gradually moving towards green power generation systems and green uh, shipping. And coastal coast, coast uh, operating vessels could be generating new demands for such green propulsion system. And in the case of large vessels, the ocean-going vessels, we will be able to apply fuel cells. Or we could combine uh, ammonia with other uh, fuel. Our target is currently large vessels, but small and mid-sized vessels also have the potential to create a higher demand for such electrification. In our survey, many people say that Korea is uh, the powerhouse of shipbuilding and maritime industry, but our export competitiveness is very low. In terms of new technologies, we import all the new technology from abroad and uh, assemble the new te imported technologies to create a system. Then, and the possible transformation of small to mid-sized vessels market into a high value added market uh, will play a very important role. And how we are going to achieve high uh, voltage electrification. This is very important, and uh, parallelization is also an important task we have to solve. The Korea Maritime and Oceans University established LBTS, and Electricity Research Institute is also operating six megawatt electricity propulsion system. And from this year, we started to design uh, the land-based test site. Such land-based test site should be designed and developed so that we can test and evaluate the locally developed technology and prevent the technology from being leaked to other countries. At first, we could import technology and do the production in Korea, but uh, such way in such way, we could uh, open more opportunities. By 2025, we have to establish the infrastructure to achieve zero carbon targets. And 
we need to develop technology that will enable um, the emit. Re uh, we need to develop technologies that will reduce 70 percent, re reduce the carbon emissions by 70 percent for um, each of the ships. And in terms of the research trends, we need to verify the reliability and stability. In this regard, electricity, electrification-related battery technology, fuel cell technologies, and fuel storage tanks need to be um, further developed and standardized. And regarding electrification, 80 kilowatt per hour uh, is the average uh, power output for vehicles. And in the case of vessels, the level of power will increase uh, to megawatt level. And in order to apply battery cell technology and it, to the vessels, we have to think about how we're going to solve the side effects or problems that may occur due to the use of battery cell. In Korea, movable electricity uh, propulsion system has been on board the ship, and such ship uh, has been operated. This is not just a one-off. This should not be just a one-off event. We need to accumulate uh, large capacity data from operating such vessels. We need to see uh, whether the power output is stable depending on various types and shapes of battery systems on board the ships. And we could work on the development of such propulsion system for both um, civilian usage and uh, naval usage. On the slide here, this is 2,600 uh, tons of um, real ship. By the end of next year or by early spring, two years later, this ship will be launched. Based on the electricity system, various megawatt battery fuel cell and zero carbon um, mixed fuel system could be tested and demonstrated. This ship is for the purpose of testing and trial. So rotosail, uh, solar power panels, and carbon capture and storage system related technologies could be tested. And we will be able to verify such uh, systems reliability. I prepared a video clip which uh, does not play. Last year, liquefied hydrogen tank was used as a fuel tank for um, this ship. So we developed such technologies. The biggest problem is the local standardization, international standardization, and it's difficult to um, accumulate the, the required amount of track records with this technology. When we think about uh, the regulations uh, at IMO, we have to get a sufficient uh, number of votes from countries. Maybe we will be able to share this technology with uh, the latecomers, and we could cooperate with developed countries to um, share our know-how and verify each other's technical te technologies. In my opinion, ammonia will be the best uh, the fuel for this. And in the case of methanol, they will have to use uh, the steam generated from uh, methanol. And we will have to see how the mega trend changes and we will have to develop technologies to catch up with the mega trend. And we need to consider the perspectives of ship owners and various stakeholders. Including Korea Register and uh, Korea 
Maritime uh, Engineering Research Institute, we could uh, have joint cooperation with each other. If you have questions, you may come to me. And I would like to emphasize that we're going to cooperate with relevant research institutes and stakeholders more.